the 1960s and 70s. It was really based on mandates with the Equal Opportunity Employment Act to ensure non-discrimination and hiring practices in the workplace. So it started out for in terms of legal conformity. And then in around the 2000s, companies really, they had this kind of collective social responsibility. They recognized the benefits of a diverse workplace and they began to diversify a little bit more. And as we know in 2020, things began to be more formalized where there were entire departments, specific and intentional roles for DEI officers. So why do you think companies are rolling back some of their initiatives? You know, Corey, it's, it, it's a lot. Some of it is the political landscape the fear of accusations of refer reverse discrimination, of preferential treatment, but there's also state legislation like in Alabama and Tennessee, Arizona and Texas, where they have absolutely banned all DEI efforts at the state level, as well as some, some corporations, but the legalities are really quite fearful. On the other hand, though, we have heard from people within marginalized communities say that they felt targeted because of DEI initiatives that they had to question if they were really qualified for a job because they wanted to make sure they weren't just checking a box. And they faced criticism from other people for that as well. Absolutely. You know, you, when you know you're qualified, you know that you have the education, the experience, and the skills and competence to do a job. But when you're constantly being attacked, are you a DEI hire? Mm -hmm. Then you wonder, did they hire me because of my demographic? Right. Or did they hire me because I am qualified? And just to be clear that people who are really engaged in DEI efforts, they're not hiring less qualified people. They are making sure those highly qualified people have an opportunity to get into the door because we know confirmation bias is real. Right, they still have a business to run and a product to sell. Absolutely. What are the legal challenges of companies pulling out of these DEI initiatives? And, and this is where it can be pretty dangerous for companies at this point. There is a law. There is a, a law around non-discrimination. So they can be sued, actually, for discrimination against marginalized communities. What we know is that people hire people who are most like them. So when you the companies that you listed that have pulled out, they... Some of them have also pulled out of the human rights campaign. And this is an organization that collects data on how well you're doing with your policies, practices, and procedures in terms of inc inclusivity. So when they pull out of that, they're not measuring anymore. So this is going unchecked, which leaves them wide open for some legal compliance issues. You know, we were just talking about it in the break, though. It is interesting when you take a company like Coors who hold back their DEI initiatives, but you still see that they are the main sponsor, for instance, of Denver Pride. Yes, absolutely. And it's, it's not a zero-sum game. Right. That we do have companies that are highly dedicated to inclusive practices, but they want to back, roll back a little bit so that they're not being attacked and accused of reverse discrimination practices. It really is an interesting topic. Dr. Rosemary Allen, thank you so much for coming in. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. A lot to unpack there. All right. Let's get a check your forecast.